What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fistico Series. I want to take a look at Emil Griffith, who is to your left, who's out of St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. Carlos Monzon's to your right, fought out of Argentina, who's a middleweight champion, 1970, when he defeated Nino Benvenuti. 14 title defenses. Carlos Monzon was he was an outstanding fighter. He reminded me of Freddie Steele. Monzon could punch. Very good technical boxer. And he would fight the great fighters of his time. Rodrigo Valdez. Fought him twice. Jose Napolis. Benny Briscoe fought him twice. Emil Griffith. Denny Moyer. He would defeat Nino Valdez. The middleweight crown, November 7th, 1970. Jorge Fernandez. As for Emil Griffith. I met him more than one occasion. I once shared a story. I was on a train with my dad heading to Queens. We were en route to getting a car. And we ran into Emil Griffith. At this point, we had already knew Emil Griffith. He was a trainer at that point in time. In Gleason's gym. And Gleason's gym was originally located on 149th Street in the Bronx, and then it relocated to Manhattan on 30th Street, then relocated to Brooklyn, New York, 45 Front Street, 75 Front Street, you had an arena. Emil Griffith would train fighters such as Simon Brown and Juan Laporte, James Bonecrusher Smith. Wilford Benitez and many others. And Emil Griffith would tell my dad and I many stories. But on this day when we met him on a train, we decided to ask him. I looked at my dad and my dad looked at me. Are you going to ask him or am I going to ask him? We talked about the Benny Kid Perret fight. He told us exactly what happened. He was very open about it. And for quite some time, Emil Griffith was very private about that fight. But I guess the time was perfect and he decided to open it up with us. Give us great details on the heckling on the scales at the commissioner's office. The same heckling would occur New York's Madison Square Garden on 50th Street. When Perrette and Jimmy Braddock was in the ring. You see, during those days, they would call fighters in as somewhat of a promotional gig to let all the garden spectators know what that next fighter that was going to be called into the ring was up to and what his next fight and when it was going to occur and with whom. Emil Griffith was called into the ring and the only slot available was a slot between Jimmy Roddick and Benny Kid Perret. Benny Kid Perret would be heckling once again. He would call Emil Griffith, Amadi Gong. R.I.P. to Benny Kid Perret. R.I.P. to Emil Griffith. Griffith stood five foot seven and a half inches. He had a 72 inch reach. Fighting career of 85 wins and 24 losses, 23 knockouts. He was stopped twice. He was a six-time world champion. 23 main event contest in New York's Madison Square Garden. 
Shy above Bo Jack and Tippy Larkin. Jack at 21 and Larkin at 19. Make Samuel Griffith a very special fighter. She worked at the New York's Garmish District, Midtown Manhattan, where he would push carts of clothes. It was hot one day and he asked if he can take his shirt off and he had what they called an hourglass physique. And the manager there at that time, his name was Howie Albert. He immediately contacted Gil Clancy, who was a recreational coach. And he would tell him about this young man, Amo Griffith. And they both agreed to take a look and see what he could do with his hands. And Amo Griffith was a natural. He would win. New York Golden Gloves, several occasions. He had three wars, Benny Kid Perrette, between 1961 and 1962. You see, Benny Kid Perrette had won welterweight championship from Don Jordan. Don Jordan would defeat Virgil Akins in a tournament. It was the relinquishing belt of Carmen Basilio. Carmen Basilio went up to face Sugar Ray Robinson in the middleweight division. So when Amo Griffiths faced Benny Kipperetta, it was for the World Welterweight Championship belt. These two men fought twice. And in between that time, Benny Kipperetta would face Gene Former, take a beating of his life. In 1962, he would meet Amo Griffiths for the third time. With all the heckling that surrounded the atmosphere of that fight, would cause Amo Griffith to throw more than 27 punches after being knocked down a previous round to the hidden body of Benny Kipperet. And unfortunately, Benny Kipperet wouldn't make it out of that ring. He would die 10 days later in the hospital. And this would go on to haunt Emil Griffith for the remainder of his career. Gil Clancy would take him up to the Concord Hotel so he can get some rest because his next fight was with Ralph Dupas. And they were afraid that Emil Griffith would collapse, not being able to throw hard punches and be the same fighter he once was. And that fight was on television. He changed the rules and a lot of stipulations and agreements between managers. That fight took place March 24th, 1962 in New York's Madison Square Garden. Amo Griffith would move up to the middleweight class. He would defeat Don Former, Gene Former's younger brother, for a vacant crown, August 19th, 1965. Amo Griffiths would face fighters such as Ruben Hurricane Carter. He would be stopped in the very first round. Carter was a menacing fighter. Did 20 years of always state prison. Carter would do a thousand sit-ups and a thousand push-ups. He was some puncher. Griffiths would find himself in the ring with Randy Sandy and Casper Ortega and Jorge Fernandez fought him twice, Denny Moya twice, Benny Kipperet three times, two wins, one loss. He would face Cuba's Izzy Logard, Jama Bahama, Teddy Wright and Don Fuma, where he would win the vacant WBA middleweight championship belt. Be in the ring with Ralph Dupas, Harry Scott, Joey Archer, Two separate occasions. Nino Benvenuti three times. For Benvenuti in New York's Madison Square Garden. When the majority of the crowd was there for Nino Benvenuti. They began to dislike Emil Griffith. For what he did to Benny Kipperet. And the rumors surrounding his sexuality. 
immigrants would be in a ring with Dick Tiger. And Tiger thought he would be jarred in that ring. He thought it was a setup fight. When he lost the fight, he complained to Don Dolphy, the ring announcer, that he knew he lost the fight when he signed the contract. Emil Griffiths was in the ring with Vito Antifermo. Vito Antifermo would have the controversial draw with marvelous Marvin Hagler. This fight took place 1979 on the undercard of Sugar Ray Leonard and Wilfred Benitez. Emil Griffiths would also be in the ring with Bad Benny Briscoe, Alan Minter, Armando Munez, and of course, we can't forget Carlos Monzon. Fought him twice. Carlos Monzon was born August 7th, 1942. San Javier, Argentina. He died January 8th, 1995. He was 52 years of age at the time of his death and he would reside in Argentina. He would do some time for throwing his wife off a balcony. Had a quite a temper to Carlos Monzon. He was a middleweight who stood five foot 11 and a half inches and had a 76 inch reach. Fought from 1963 to 1977. Had over 100 fights, 89 wins, 61 knockouts, three losses, nine draws, and one no contest. 14 title defenses. He's in the ring with Rodriguez Valdez. Put him twice. Jose Napolis out of Cuba. Be in the ring with Bad Benny Briscoe twice, Emil Griffith, Benny Moyer, and Nino Benvenuti. That's where he won the middleweight crown, November 7th, 1970. Jorge Fernandez. But in that Emo Griffith fight, fought him Saturday, September 25th, 1971, for the WBA WBC middleweight championship crown. He would defeat Emo Griffith in 14 rounds, but he would have to stop the fight. Fought him again Saturday, June 2nd, 1973. WBA WBC middleweight championship belt, he would defeat him in 15 rounds. You see, these two men had a point to prove with one another. You see, when Bad Benny Briscoe faced Carlos Monzon, one of the two times, he fought him in Argentina, and it wound up becoming a draw, and most spectators, even in Argentina, thought that Bad Benny Briscoe won a fight. One thing I can say, after my conversations with Emil Griffith, Matter of fact, he was training Bonecrusher Smith at that time. He told me specifically, but he spoke with my dad and I several occasions. He said, young man, you have to understand this game. Either you're going to be in it for the full duration of the results. Whether you have your hand raised or you're knocked out, understand one thing. You represent the thoughts that others reject for themselves. And either you're going to be a fighter or you're going to be a spectator. Only you must decide. And I never forgot those words from Amy Griffith. Never forgot them. It's quite a humanitarian. It was a pleasure knowing Emil Griffith, along with hundreds of other fighters that I had the pleasure of meeting. I just wanted to salute Emil Griffith. And I wanted to do this video between him and Carlos Monzon. Carlos Monzon, I can't give a salute to. Great fighter, yes. Humanitarian, not so much. I don't often judge fighters on their personal life. Carlos Monzon, can I get a pass from me? 
So thanks for hanging in there with me. This is Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fistigoff Series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Until next time, you've heard this story on the Museum of the Forgotten Fistigoff Series. Salute.